In this lecture, let's learn how we can pass some data with a route. So, Angular allows us to pass data through a route. The route data can be either a static data or it can also be a dynamic data. Now, we have already learned how we can pass data using a query parameter and using a route parameter. But in this lecture, we will learn how we can pass static or dynamic data with a route without using query string or route parameter. So here I am in our Angular application. Now, in this application, if I go to this courses page, and here, if I click on the buy now button of any one of these courses, first of all, it is redirecting us to the login page because we are not logged in. So let me go ahead and let me log in here. Okay, and then now it is redirecting us to the courses page. And here, let me go ahead and let me click on the buy now button of one of these courses. And it has redirected us to the checkout page. Now in the checkout page, we are showing static information. So all these values which you see here, this course name, this price, this subtotal, everything is hard coded. But now what we want is, we want to display the details of that course for which the buy now button has been clicked. So let's see how we can do that. Let's go to VS Code. And first of all, I'm going to show you how we can pass static data to a route. So let me close this app component.ts here. And let's also close this app component.html. And here we are defining our routes. Now, when we want to pass a static data with the route, we can specify that data here when we are creating the route. For that, on the route for which we want to pass the data, in this case, we want to pass data to this route, to this checkout route. There, we can specify a property. The property name is data. And to that, we can specify the static data which we want to pass. Here, let's say I want to pass an object where I will have a name for the course and name for the course, let's say for now, test course. Okay, and let's say I also want to have a price property for this object and I'll set the price as $3.99. So we want to pass this object to this route whenever the user tries to navigate to this route. Okay, so in this way, we are passing a static data. To pass the static data on the route, we have specified this data property, and to that, we have assigned the static data. Now, let's save the changes here, and let's see how we can retrieve the value of this data property in the component. So for this route, the component is checkout component, and we want to retrieve this data in the checkout component. Let's go to checkout component. There, let's go to the component class. And in here, when the user navigates to checkout route, the view of this checkout component will be rendered. Basically, this checkout component will be initialized. So here I'm going to use ng on init lifecycle hook. And inside this ng on init lifecycle hook, I'm going to write the logic to retrieve the static data. So here, in order to retrieve the static data, first of all, we need an instance of activated route class. So let's go ahead and let's create a property. Let's call it active route. It is going to be of type activated route. And in order to use this activated route, we also need to import it from Angular slash router. And then let's use the inject method to ask Angular to inject an instance of this activated route class. All right. And now all we have to do is we have to access this activated route instance. For that, we can say this dot active route. On that, we have a data property. So we want to read the static data. If I hover over this data property, you will see that it returns an observable of static and resolved data of this route. We have already used this data property earlier when we were talking about resolve route card. Now, same data property can also be used to get the static data. Okay, and on this, since it is an observable, let's subscribe. And this subscribe method, we need to pass a callback function which will be called every time this observable emits a new data and we are going to receive that new data as a parameter as an argument to this callback function and inside this callback function what we want to do is let me go ahead and let me create a property let me call it course it is going to be of type course okay and here we will say this dot course equals this data 
which we are going to receive for this data parameter okay now here we have this error because here we have not specified the type so we know that this data it is going to return us an object it is basically going to return us this object right so for now from here i will remove the type so that we can avoid that error okay and now that error is gone let's save the changes and now in the html file what we will do is the place where we are displaying the course name so let me scroll down and here we are displaying the course name so here i will simply use string interpolation syntax and here let's say course dot name okay this data here it has a name property so we want to display the value of that name property in the same way here let's also display the price here let's say course dot price okay let me copy this line from here and i'll also display it here okay discount is zero zero so we are not going to provide any discount and here again i'll paste that same line because we want to display the course price okay and text let's keep it as hard coded and this subtotal what we will do is to this price we will add this 47.41 all right with this let's save the changes let's go to the web page and let's see if it works so let me first log in okay now it will take five seconds to go to the courses page let me open this node.js course so i'll click on this buy now button and in the checkout page you see the course name is test course and then the price is 399 so basically this is what we passed when we were passing this static data so you see we are passing the price as 399 so this is how we can pass static data but here we don't want to pass static data instead we want to pass that course object for which the user has clicked on buy now button so from here here i will remove this and now instead of passing a static data we want to pass a dynamic data here when any one of the course button is clicked so when the buy now button of any one of these courses is clicked we want to pass that course object to the checkout component okay so let's see how we can do that so let's go back to vs code there let's go to courses component so here we have this courses component.html there we should have the buy now button so here we have the buy now button okay and when this buy now button is clicked we are redirecting the user to this courses slash checkout route now here what i also want is when the user tries to access this route we want to pass the current course object for which the buy now button has been clicked so here we want to pass a dynamic data we want to pass that course object for which the buy now button has been clicked so for that we can use a directive called as state and we can go ahead and we can wrap this directive within square brackets because here we want to do property binding and to this we can assign the current course object and we are going to get it inside this course variable so here we are looping over this all courses property and for each iteration this course will be assigned with the current course object so we want to pass that object we want to assign that object to this state property okay so in this way we can pass a dynamic data with the route here this data will be passed with this route now we want to access this data in the checkout component so for this route which component view will be displayed the checkout component view will be displayed so there we can access this data let's see how we can do that so here let me save the changes let's go back to our checkout component and now since we are not passing any static data i will comment this line i'll keep it for your reference and now let's see how we can access the dynamic data now in order to access the dynamic data we need an instance of router class so let me go ahead and let me create a property i'll call it router 
it should be of type router class and we need to import it from angular slash router okay and again we are going to use the inject method and we are going to ask angular to inject an instance of this router class inside this checkout component and now let's set the type of this course property as course object okay now here in order to access the dynamic data first we need to access this route instance on that we can call a method called get current navigator get current navigation okay and on that we need to call a property called extras and on that we can call another property called state and that's it so this is going to return us that course object let's go ahead and let's assign that object to this course property so here let's say this dot course equals whatever value it is going to return the state is going to return now here again we have this error so if i hover over this state you will notice that the state it is going to return a value of type any but here we have set the type of this course as this course class so that's why we have this error so for now what i will do is again i will remove this type from here let's simply keep it like this and with this let's save the changes let's go to the web page let's check if everything is working or not so first of all if i try to click on this buy now button it will redirect us to login page there let's go ahead and let's log in first and again it will take five seconds to redirect us to the courses page and now let me click on this buy now button of this react course if i scroll up we do not see the course name and we are also not seeing the price and here we have an error so after all these events have been executed after all these router events have been executed we can see that in checkout component inside this ng on init method we have an error and the error says cannot read properties of null so it is trying to read the value of this extras on null so basically for some reason this line here this router dot get current navigation it is returning us null so if this method is not working what we can also do is we can say this dot course equals we have in angular one property called history on that we can try to access the state okay so this should work if i save the changes let's go back to the web page okay let's log in first let me close the console here okay now let me go ahead and let me click on the buy now button of this react course so you will notice that the name is not being displayed but at least the price of that course is being displayed now the name is not being displayed that's because the courses class does not have a name property so if i expand this models expand this courses there you will see there we have the title property and not name property so in the checkout component dot html instead of using name let's use title okay let's save the changes again let's go back to the web page let me log in and let me click on maybe this angular course so i will try to buy this angular course and now you will see that the course name is a complete angular course and the price of that course is being displayed here if i go back and if i click on maybe this machine learning course so if i click on the buy now button of machine learning course course name is machine learning with python and the price of that course is being displayed here so this is how we can pass dynamic data for passing dynamic data what we did is the place where we are using the router link directive in this case we are using the router link directive inside this courses component.html so on this buy now button we have used this router link directive and there we are specifying the path after that we are also specifying this state directive and to that we are assigning the dynamic data which we want to pass to the route 
in this case we want to pass the current course object to this slash courses slash checkout route and for this route what is the component we are rendering we are rendering the checkout component so in the checkout component we are reading that data using history dot state and this line should also have worked but for some reason it is not working but if this approach is not working you can use this approach so in this lecture you learned how to pass static and dynamic data to a route and this is all about routing and route guards in angular in this section we learned about routing and route guards in great detail with some real world examples now if you have any questions related to routing or route guards in angular then feel free to ask it this is all from this section and from this lecture thank you for listening and have a great day